What's up, everybody? I'm Kyle Carlson, and this is the Rollback BMX Podcast. The number one BMX podcast in the universe, according to me. Today's guest is one of the most iconic photographers in the history of BMX, Mr. Rob Delecki. In addition to being an incredible photographer, Rob is also a BMX lifer, and a man who is willing to travel the world in ways that few can relate to. So sit back, listen up, get educated. This is the Rollback BMX Podcast with Rob Delecki. Good morning, Mr. Delecki. How are you doing? Good. So we're here in Tokyo in an apartment what is this part of the city called? Uh, I don't even know. I don't know either. I, 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 don't <laughs> I, think I know we're near the Morishita train station. Okay, that's, that's probably it then. Yeah. Um, just to preface for the, the, the podcast here, I don't know if you've caught it, but there's been those weird uh, like announcements going on outside. Did you catch those? There's like nah. weird like, voices. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm going insane. But I, I heard it when I was walking down the street too. Like There's random speakers and stuff. Yeah, they're actually in the, the like light pole posts yeah which is real weird <laughs> I, and it's one of those things where i wish i knew a little bit of japanese so i had any idea what was going on yeah like i don't know it's really kind of strange but if you hear any strange voices it's uh it's that <laughs> <laughs> we're in a part of tokyo that has voices what do you think of tokyo you we were talking about how much i like love it, it. Yeah. yeah yeah it's my third time here and yeah I love, hopefully i can keep coming back at some point yeah did yeah. you first come here for bmx yeah 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 all, all three times were bmx related yeah any yeah. uh, any big highlights in Tokyo? What's your what's your favorite thing here? Um, I'd say a mix of the local riders I uh, hang out with and the riding spots. Is who, like who are your guys here? Peggy. Yeah, Daisuke and and Peggy. How do you know those guys? Uh, I've met them. I met Peggy the first time I came here, and then um, kind of they they also came out to Philly. Uh, probably a, I came out here. Let's see. I came out here a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I'm sorry, a little less a year ago. Um, and they had come out to to the Northeast uh, the fall before that, and that's when I like kind of hung out with them a little bit. And, yeah, kind of random. Yeah, going to Philly. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool seeing the the scene kind of blossom here. And there's been you know like Yumi getting on fit, uh, obviously on the contest side of things. Rim Rim doing yeah making noise. Definitely. It's kind of cool that Japan is. More so on the map right now in BMX than I kind of think it ever has been. Alive, they have the brand, yeah, you know, which is yeah. cool. Like, yeah. Ben Lewis rides for them. Like, yeah. it seems like it's kind of come a long way, which is Yeah, cool. it's, I'm sure it's just going to keep growing. It's such a get cool more, Get more and more exposure, too. And it just seems like there's a lot of riders motivated doing their own thing as far as, like, their own videos. Um, there's a really good photographer here. Just, yeah, it's really cool to see. Is that our, our good friend with the dreads? Yeah. 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 Oh, what's his name? uh he's awesome Kiru. yes yes he's yeah. awesome yeah. he uh he drives a ford bronco oh that's his which i didn't make, even know which that doesn't make <laughs> doesn't make sense at all for that living thing over is, here. that thing's unbelievable that thing would be like uh, a hot commodity in the united states and over here like that's got to be like like you can't buy that you can go buy a rolls royce you can't go yeah. buy that that badass big bronco in japan what do you yeah. think of the old uh van we were here for van Homan and brian kachinsky's uncovered event um went down yesterday here in tokyo uh, what do you think of that? That was kind of cool. Yeah, it was really cool. I, I had never been to uh, an event here and seen like all the riders together. Yeah. And so seeing the amount of riders, the the camaraderie, and just everybody, just everybody's just really happy and psyched, you know. So it's, yeah, like, it's really cool to see. It was cool because it seemed like there's a couple different crews, but it yeah. seems like everybody's cool. I yeah. Like any everybody seems to get along. There's no like, I didn't really notice any kind of like beef. I'm sure it exists some to some degree somewhere, but. Yeah. For the most part, like, yeah, it just seems like everybody, it's just nice to see all the enthusiasm. One thing that impressed me was the amount of younger kids that yeah. were really good. Like, yeah. I feel like in five years, it's going to be wild out here. Yeah. There's definitely uh, that crazy, like, younger generation of, like, I don't know, under 13 year old kids. Yeah. That yeah. Like children. They're shredding. Yeah. 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 I'm not really around that much at all, especially in the U.S. So I don't, you know, I don't really see yeah. what's going on like, other than a few random kids i see here and there but yeah here it's definitely they're certainly promise. better than the uh the 12 year olds that ride my local park yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever yeah. that's worth did you go to any of these uncovered events in the states last year yeah i went to the first one in, in maryland how did this compare to that um it's hard to compare because it's just is that charm city is that that was yeah that? There, okay. it was the there there used to be two charm cities one in baltimore one in this like small town in northern maryland the, okay. that's where the uncovered event was but that's closed now Huh, skate um, parks, that's what happens. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just uh, it was different in the sense of all the the um, the park was a little bit different. So, and there was just you know had met Mike there just 
basically going through the roof <laughs> every other minute. So it's just like and jumping across the park and stuff. So it's like you had these like the level riding on some of the, the dudes was just outrageous. Yeah. Um, and then here it just seemed like the, the sheer number of riders was like what really made this contest stand out Dude, were, out of all the like were, out of between the two. There were more riders here than there were in. Uh, yeah. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I guess it's a big deal when there aren't a whole lot of things going on in Tokyo. Yeah. But no, that's awesome. It's good to hear. It's good to to see this moving forward and it's good to see Brian and Van do that, you know? Yeah, it's awesome that they put a lot of time and effort into it. I think think it, they set a good example of like, if you want something, you just have to do it. People spend so much time sitting back and chilling and they're kind of, nobody's telling them to do this, you know? It's kind of like, we want an amateur event, let's do it, you know? And not lining their pockets or anything, just something cool to do, but that's real positive. So, what's up with you? So you're in Japan right now, and you said you're going to Hong Kong from here, and you've never been to Hong Kong. Yeah. So you're just on a crazy adventure. Yeah, it just worked out where the flight was the same price from a round trip from Philly to Tokyo, or or Philly to Tokyo to Hong Kong back home. So I'm like, never been to Hong Kong, so I'm like, why not? How do you, who'd you book it through? Uh... I don't remember how I actually found the itinerary. I was going to say, you have a weird way. Yeah, I, 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 I bounce around all different sites. And then yep, yep. Um, I don't have like a set procedure. Dude, whatever. But, then what, but if I can book it through the airline site, I do it. And yep. in this case, it worked out where like the, the itinerary I found for that for the the price that I found it at, I found that on the United site for the same price. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I hear the voices. Do you hear them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, that's, that's one thing I always wonder about like, Maybe it exists, but it'd be cool if there was a website that would give you those opportunities for weird people like us. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, hey, we want to spend an extra day here? Like, yeah, sure, why not? But I think this is kind of, uh, I, I, you know, I've, I've known and admired your work for a very long time. Um, I've probably only known you for a little over a year or so. I think just being on two different coasts, we didn't yeah. really cross paths or anything. But I've always admired that you seem to just kind of roll with it. You kind of seem like, oh, let's go to Hong Kong for a couple of days. And I was asking you, do you know anybody in Hong Kong? And no, figure it out. It's got yeah, I figure, hey, as long as, as long as I have a place to stay, I'll go anywhere. But I, but that's the way you've been doing yeah. things for quite some time, it seems. Since I started traveling, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember um, being in Peru a number of years ago. And they were like, oh, y- you were either going there or had just gone there or something. I can't uh-huh. remember. But I remember. Yeah, I was there in, like, I think it was 2012. Okay, it must have been after that. But they're like, oh, yeah, the Lucky was here. And I was like, oh, who was he with? And they're like, I, I think you just were alone, were you? No, I was with uh, my friend Zach and Connell. Zach uh, Costa? Yeah. Fuck yeah, that guy's yeah. badass. Oh, yeah, yeah. How is he? Him. Do you know how he's doing? Yeah, he's good. He's Riding? flown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's still killing dude, it. Dude, that, yeah. that unsung hero, man. Yeah, to- 100%. Yeah. Total, yeah, total, yeah, total dude, badass. The best. Yeah. Um, but what what kind of stirred up this, uh, this openness to traveling? Did you travel as a kid at all, or is this... Yeah, I mean, I was always a fan of, of exploring and going to new places um you know i've always been like kind of like a a map nerd like always looking at maps and like oh look at this that you know i'm still in that way um yeah um but yeah just kind of you know i traveled a little bit when i had money i was didn't really have the means to travel a lot i never traveled internationally until 15 years ago how old are you Um, 46 Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> made, it, made it longer than people used to make it in the uh, 1700s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so you didn't travel overseas until like in your 30s? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, let me think. Uh, yeah, until I was 30. Or wow. right before I turned 30. What was yeah. your first overseas trip? Uh, Argentina. That's kind of a crazy one. Yeah. Yeah. And that was just kind of worked out where uh, these dudes that lived in Argentina, uh, my friend Nico and uh, Ricky... Was it Bu- Buenos Aires or? Yeah, but okay. they're from there. And then um, they were in, in in the U.S. staying with my friend George and got to know them. And they're like, hey, if you want to come to Argentina, come down. And I was like, yeah, all right. That's awesome. So, yeah. Um, how, how was that? Was that eye opening? Was it? Oh, was 100%. It stressful? That was straight. Was it- no, it wasn't stressful. I mean, other than like always being like, especially uh, I feel like it was more raw than uh, like Buenos Aires, at least. Um, where it was like, you had definitely had to be on your toes yeah. a lot. So it was just like people, you know, th- obviously they're just looking out for you, but they're kind of like giving you like heart, not like it, almost excessive warnings. Like, Hey, you know, watch out, watch out, watch your, you know, watch your back, whatever. Don't put your bag here, whatever, you know, just always trying to like reinforce the fact that there's grimy dudes around, you know? Was so, it, was it sketchy? Did you, I mean, did anything nah, happen? No, 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 no. It was fine. Yeah. There, there was no problem. So but does that, like, that kind of just kicked it all off after that trip? You want Yeah. To- I mean, I, I, I always wanted to travel and just never really took the initiative to do it until then as far as internationally at least yeah um and uh yeah once that happened then whenever opportunities arose or i could 
knew someone somewhere, I would just try and had the money to do it, I would go. Yeah, I remember the first time I ever went overseas. Um, I think I think I was, was eight, that? I think I was eighteen, mm-hmm. and the, like a Europe trip. The first stop was Amsterdam. Uh, I remember getting Amsterdam. <laughs> I remember getting to Amsterdam and just being like, "Holy shit, it's another world!" Yeah. And now looking back, that I've done quite a bit of traveling. You go to Amsterdam, and it's like I'm pretty much still at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody speaks English. Yeah, everything's yeah. familiar. It's easy to get around. Yeah. But like, so talking about going to Argentina. Yeah, that was off, completely like, like a, literally like stepping on a different planet almost. You know, yeah, everything. You know, I'd really been in that scenario before, where just you know. Different continent, different hemisphere, yeah. Different language, you know. Just yeah. So, do you keep track of how many countries you've been to? Uh, not totally. I'd probably forty-ish. I'd say. Nice. Yeah. What uh, What stands out? What are some of your some of your favorites and why? Uh, I mean, I, mean to... I have different levels of favorites. As have, far have you as been like... to every every continent? I assume. Yeah. Okay. Except for Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah. But, yeah. That's only for uh, really rich white guys. Yeah, I pretty think. much. <laughs> My dad's got a. Big fat rich white guy friend that has a Lamborghini, and he recently took like a fifty thousand dollar cruise to Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but the same dude travels a lot, and we're always talking about cities, and he's like, "You got to go here, here, and here." And it's just like the big expensive steakhouse rich Americans go to. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not even cool shit. Yeah, like, yeah. whatever. Anyways, yeah, sorry, I mean, I, there's, there's different levels of quote tourism. You know, as far as some what people what some people like, I'm not. I don't really care about. And then what I enjoy. People be like, "How is that even a trip? How is that even a vacation? That just seems like, uh, like a, a nightmare and, and just a complete headache." And uh, it's, you know, I don't know. All <laughs> right. So, uh, favorite place? Uh, well, I have different. Like I said, I have different levels of yep, what we yep. consider favorite in the grand scheme of things. Not really necessarily like riding. I'd say my top three countries I've been to were would be like Costa Rica, New Zealand. Um, the third man. This it's kind of tough to narrow it down, but I'd oh, say... Oh, yeah, it's impossible. Th- those are definitely top two, so... Costa Rica and yeah. New Zealand, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Why, uh... I haven't been to New Zealand, so I'm yeah. not good for conversation there, but why Costa Rica? Um, I like the... Obviously, the... I, I'm a fan of tropical areas. Yep. So, like, that that alone covers that. That's why you live in uh, New Jersey? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most tropical place you could live in. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason I well I live in Philly actually. Oh sorry. I'm sorry. from New sorry, Jersey, I but live in Philly. No, nah, it's all right. But, um But uh yeah, I just really enjoyed um I kinda well first thing is I really enjoy the infrastructure there as far as it's easy to get around the whole country. The yeah. bus system's awesome. If you're in San Jose, you could get anywhere in the country really easy and inexpensive. Um then the beaches are unbelievable. Yep. Just I just like the uh and it's also it has a infrastructure, but like a like a government infrastructure, but it's not very regulated. Pretty loose. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I guess, that stands out as one of my favorite places because I've been there. I've been there two times. But I'd say, like El Salvador or uh, Nicaragua would be, could potentially be better. Like that, that really? would probably rank higher at this point if I if I ever went back to those places. I had a layover in El Salvador once, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh man, I kind of want to check it out. But that's San Salvador. It was in San Salvador. Yeah. Well, that that place that's like. I've been through there. I never actually like extensively okay. like, explored it, but yeah. I know that's like a really kind of grimy area. That, like, see, that, city, that's, so. that's what I heard, and, and, <laughs> and that's that's what gives uh, El Salvador such a like notoriously bad rap. Yeah, yeah, because it's such a raw place, and that there's, there's there is a lot of crime, but to me, it's like once you leave that area, there's still crime, and it's like, like because it's such a raw place, and there's, yeah. there's there's a lot of poverty, and you know whatever, but. Once you leave it th- that area, there there is so many positive aspects to that yeah, country. Yeah. Primarily, it's absurdly cheap. It's yeah. easy to get around. You could take a public bus for like a quarter or less. Did you go there on a BMX trip? No, I was str- strictly like okay. I- I've never had a bike there. <laughs> so, so you, you've been there more than once, El Salvador. Once, no. Just okay, once, yeah. okay. I think that's part of why I think like uh, Costa Rica also ranks higher because in the BMX end of it, there's a lot to ride there. Yes. Like parks. Yes. Like I like San Jose. There's a scene there, you know, like I, I've known Kenneth like from the first time I went. Like, yeah. Yeah. When he was like a little kid, you know, kind of thing. So yeah. it's like, you know, like it's cool to see how that scene has grown too. But like, yeah. So overall, that's why I think Costa Rica still stands out as like in that region, at least is like still my favorite place. When you, I'm assuming you met Kenneth on one of those old trips when you were out there. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. I went with a bunch of people in like 2009. Jake and Esto. Yeah. Jake's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yeah. that dude. Um, Zach was on that trip also. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I assume when you met Kenneth, he was probably a child. Yeah, I, I, it's funny because actually I, 
technically don't really remember actually okay. meeting him. Okay, yeah. But he said he met me. He's like, told because we went to the skate park. There was like this indoor park. I don't know if it's still there, but called like Zona Extreme or something. I, I forget. I, I forget the is. exact name of it. Pretty sure it's not. All right, but anyway, so yeah, this was an indoor park there, and we went there one night, like just a random night, and there was like. I don't know, 50, 40 or 30. It was a lot of riders there. I'd say, I'd say, I remember 50, but it might've been a little less. But, gotcha. but anyway, there was a lot of riders there and he, I guess he was there that night. Yeah. And he said he met me and stuff and I was like. Because he, he's told me about that. Yeah. He remembers meeting those guys. Yeah. And like, yeah. Because I, um, because you know, I met him a couple years later at a contest, and he was like, "I'm like, oh hey, you're from Costa Rica." I was like, "Yeah, I went there." He's like, "Oh yeah, I met you," and I'm like, "Oh, one of those." Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Oh damn, I don't remember." <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you been? Have you been up to where he lives in Jocko? Hako. I don't know. I say no. Like, does like, does oh, he live I, there? I, I'm, I'm I don't from California. Yeah, yeah right. he, he's from. He's not from there, but he lives there now. Oh, ah, okay. But yeah, he, no. That 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 uh, town's really. cool. I mean, it's it's kind of like the super touristy town. It but is. They, they have, and I'm by no means. I would don't want to ever like like mislead anyone thinking I'm like some kind of surfer, but like yeah, yeah, the yeah, waves yeah. are unbelievable. Yeah. And actually, that's like the first time I actually like kind of surfed. Okay. You know, so because Kenneth has his like kind of training facility park there. Ah, all right. But he also has at his house that concrete bowl. Oh, damn. I don't know if you've seen all that nah. stuff. I, I mean, I think I've seen footage he's, of it, but got, I don't got, know. He's got a real, real cool yeah. setup there. Yeah. So, But I just like the the suburbs of San Jose have like a couple of really good parks. I, I actually haven't even ridden them. i just seen footage of them. Yeah. Like, when I was on a trip, we just kind of stayed in Han, uh, San Jose, rode around there a bunch, and then yeah. went to like Tamarino. There's like a really cool bowl there. Um, but that's about it. I, we didn't really ride that. The, there, there was some of the stuff that didn't even exist yet anyway. That, like stuff got yeah. built after that. There's yeah. a, a few parks that got built after that time. I went to some um, pretty pretty crazy parks on a trip a couple of years ago. It was a it's an impressive place, man. Yeah, this week is pretty crazy yeah. for not being that far from yeah. yeah so saying it's like, in the United States, it's, like, yeah, it's pretty damn close, and it's like an entirely different like tropical world. That's a paradise. So we're saying uh, Costa Rica, New Zealand, and maybe El Salvador, Nicaragua. How about yeah. for BMX? What are some of your favorite places you've been for BMX? What's the most? Maybe um, some, maybe I'd some say surprising, not just like Spain. No, <laughs> no. I mean, I, South America probably is is definitely at the top of the list. I just love. Like the riding scene, the architecture, um, yeah, like Brazil, Argentina, Chile, those are like the three main. Uh, I don't know, actually, no, I'm, I gotta say like Ecuador, yeah, Peru, yeah, it, South America. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> really? Because <laughs> I'd say at least a third, possibly half the countries in that continent have awesome riding scenes. Yeah, and they have like if you're looking at it from like a street perspective, they're unbelievable. If you're looking at it from like a trails perspective, um, Colombia has like a really good scene okay. and some really good spots to ride. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Colombia too. I mean, Colombia is ridiculous on all ends of the spectrum, but between like the the cities, between some of the parks there, and then the the Buga area where Alejandro Cara lives. Like he he. Have you been out to his place? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. 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 I like it, that. There. That area is amazing. Like what he's done for the scene there is is you can't even. Like, yeah, give it justice. Hold it together. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he made the scene. Like he just made all these crazy trail spots and to, through the cities or the towns or in that in that area. And yeah, the scene that developed because of that is, is unbelievable. I remember guys would go down there once a year. There'd be a jam or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think like you, a, you were there. Yeah, a lot. I went. I went there with a couple couple times. Yeah, like with, uh, Mark Mulville one time, and then Nick Bruce one time. It's a random one. I think Nick yeah. skipped a feast to go to it or something like that. Oh yeah, and it was like before shit was crazy. I remember he yeah. asked me what he should do, and I'm like. Dude, go to that. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, he, he, we probably made a good choice because that, that we had an awesome time. That, on that yeah, trip. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you turned him into a vegan. <laughs> That's the <that. laughs> shout to, to Nick for uh, I uh, make some good dietary choices. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to I've been to Bogota, but that's it. Yeah, I've spent a couple, and it was really cool. Yeah, I, I like that city. Yeah, definitely another kind of raw, grimy place. That I had definitely like, got to be on your toes, like depending yeah, on where yeah. you're at, but it's it's an amazing city. I was in a nice it's, area and I had yeah. people holding my hand. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So it was, was fine and easy and whatnot. But uh, what have you ever run into any crazy drama? Any getting robbed anywhere or anything? Uh, or? Not, <laughs> not here. Yeah. <laughs> not on <gonna play>. um, <laughs> No, nothing that ended really bad. There's been a few close calls. Uh, the most... The one that sticks out the most to me was uh, in Brazil, and it was that was like my second international trip. Okay, because that was like right after. So your first was Argentina, and your second was Brazil. Yeah, and the only reason I went to to Brazil right after was because when I was in Argentina, uh, one of the dudes I know there is like, oh hey, there there's going to be this like I don't know a, a, like 
X there was like this X Games Brazil, like Latin yeah. American X Games. Yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. first one. Okay. And that was they were they were holding it like a couple months later. And he's like, Oh, you should come out for that. And we go like, you know, I know some dudes that live in in Sao Paulo and Rio and or not not Rio, but like in between the the, the contest was in Rio, but he knew dudes in Sao Paulo and like a couple of the cities on the way from Rio to Sao Paulo. So I was like, Yeah, I'll go along. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, um, do you speak any Spanish? Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm like good at it, but I can kind of get by. I can definitely read it way better than I could speak it. Gotcha. But I can, when I'm immersed in it somewhere, and that's my only choice, I could kind of get by enough to communicate with people without having someone that's bilingual with me to to. Yeah. You know, but but I'm definitely by no means fluent. <laughs> <laughs> good. So that the second time. I went on an international trip, and that was in Brazil. Like I said, it was a few months after that Argentina trip. For the X Games. Yeah, yeah. for the Latin American X Games. Um, and we were in Rio. Um, th- we were hanging out with, like, this one local dude. And, you know, he was, t- you know, obviously told us to, you know, hey, be on your toes. This is, like, kind of a sketchy area, especially where they went to this one skate park. And uh, so, so we were riding a little bit. And then I was like, want to shoot this one photo. I'm like, hey, is it okay if I set up, shoot a photo here now? And he's like, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's okay. Set up meaning flashes. Yeah. The whole, okay. Yeah, it was that night. It was a legitimate evening. photo. Got yeah. Um, so so I set up, shot the photo. It was cool. Yeah, no worries. No problems. Um, and then we come go back to the skate park two nights later. And uh, the one dude that you know we were with, I guess he was like talking with someone and told them a story about the night prior, which was the night after we were there. Apparently some dude rolled up with like a waving a gun saying, Hey, where's the American with the camera? Equipment? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. And so dodged the bullet there. Wow. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. What, uh, what, what's on the list as far as where you want to go, but haven't gone yet. Uh, phew, that's a long list. <laughs> well, let's say hi. Give, you give me a couple. I'm curious what what you think, having been so many places, what has... Well, I want to, like, get to the rest of the countries in, in South America. There's, okay. like, four more. Well, no, more than that. There's, like, six, I think. Okay. Um, all of Southeast Asia. Um, there's a lot of, like, random countries, like, in, like... Uh, well, I've never even been to Russia, you know, like... Yeah. Some, some places are kind of obvious that, you know, people have... Plenty of people go to, but I just never... never have you ever been to the Middle East? Yeah. Where have you been over there? Um, well, let me think. Where exactly? I mean, I mean, I've been in Doha, but that was okay. just, that was like kind of like a layover. Yeah, so I don't know if that really even counts. But um, I'm trying to think of where else. Well, I mean, Israel. I guess if you want to count that, is the Middle East. I don't know if that really counts. Middle East European but, cousin, something like that. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's Asia, but uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 But uh, I mean, I've been in, like Egypt and Jordan. Okay. Um, I guess that's kind of the Middle East region. I know, when I think when I hear Middle East, I always think of like Iraq or something, you know, like just, yeah, like, Afghanistan area like that. That's one of the things. Go, going to uh, Saudi Arabia was one of the things for me, at least, that I was like questioning going. Like, should I even go? This is terrifying, you know. And after going yeah. there, I was like, that was awesome. Yeah. Like, it, 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 all it, these it, places it, it, have a bad rap, and it's like, yeah. I think well, that's with. Yeah, there's countless places I've been to that supposedly have a bad, yeah, you know, like, yeah, or like yeah. oh, this place is bad, you don't want to go, whatever. Yeah. And I go, and I'm like, wasn't, not, it's never, say 99% of the times, so I hear that, and then I go, it's not what people say it's like. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's gang wars where they kill other gangs, so uh, yeah, I'm going here on vacation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're, I live in Philly, and there's enough yeah. grimy <laughs> neighborhoods that like I don't really go anywhere that I felt like is that much worse than that. Yeah. You know, other than maybe this one neighborhood in Bogota, where it was like to even get into it, it's like all barbed wired and fenced off. It was like to a, go to the neighborhood to go through to get into the neighborhood. You have to go through this like weird. Did you go through wire. it? Yeah. <laughs> During Damn. the day, we were gonna go at first. We were gonna go at night, and then we didn't. Like we riding just, BMX or just just kind of ride through it. Just Damn. And it was like yeah, it was pulls it was like off limits. Like the cops don't go in there. Like you don't. But no shit. Yeah. Wow. It's kind of like kind of similar, I guess, to like the favelas in in Brazil. Gotcha. Yep. Something kinda similar. Like self governed. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um. Have you, have you been to Venezuela? No, I, I've been wanting to go, but and a friend of mine, like we we talked about it, but it just never happened. Partly now because of the, the all the madness going. Yeah, down. Yeah, the whole yeah. government situation there is is 
the mess. So even where where Daniel Dares is from in Caracas, I've never been, but he's told me like, oh, if you come, we can go shoot some stuff on these spots. But I have to call the guy and get permission. And he saw me this a number of years ago. Oh, that's like, amazing. He has permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. ridiculous. But I, but I also wonder, like, how strong is that permission? You know, yeah. now they know he's a dude that moved away and made some money. Yeah. So like, yeah. do you still get that's the same true. permission as you did? And you were yeah. a shitty kid that lived over yeah. here. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Do I get permission on your behalf? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it's how tough. that there's, works. There's one spot there that I need to go to. What like, spot's that? I, I just seen it. Some there was some edit that he had put out a long time ago. I don't know. Could have been like eight years ago or something. But there's like this crazy quarter pipe thing on a on a, on a building that looks ridiculous okay I, i've always wanted to go to but i remember you it's would... like to me it's just like stuff like that just give me a reason to go to a place like, yeah, like... yeah 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 the, <laughs> so, the gateway drug yeah i remember basically. talking to you about that crazy uh kind of diy park in bolivia that i yeah i, I went did you ever end up going to that no nah, i still haven't had the trip hasn't happened yet but okay. it's, it's still uh, that's high on the list is that is that a solo trip or are you going out there no nah, i mean i want to go with people I, that's something when it's like a riding trip or like i'm bringing my bike i try to like go with people yeah you know i i do i i don't really do that many solo trips they're usually just like you know something like hong kong is just like uh i'm on a trip i'm going home so i'm just gonna stop there for a few days and check yeah. It out. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah yeah i do that a little bit i've been doing that's kind of become a more frequent thing in the last couple of years but um other than that yeah if, it, if, it, if it's a riding trip i'm trying to go with people do you, do you try to incorporate bmx in most of these trips you go on yeah if possible but yeah. it's just kind of unless it's like with my girlfriend nicole then where we're gonna do just a trip on our, on our own then i don't yeah then it's not did she have like similar mentality to you as far as just getting out and doing shit uh yeah she she's pretty open to it she puts up a lot of nonsense that especially <laughs> on trips that we do like yeah. we like i said we don't travel like the typical and you say oh we're going on vacation it, it, well like i said people saw what we do on vacation the, the amount of bs we deal with g- g- give me an example um I'm a big fan of public transportation. Okay. So you're the only one. You're probably. The fan. You're the probably. Fan. <laughs> yeah. Probably am the, the, the sole fan of, of public. Tra- but I like I like taking public transportation when we get like we get to the airport. I try to figure out a way to get to where we're going. That's cool. But as cheap as possible. Yep. yep. <laughs> so I'm not taking a cab. I'm like, all right, let's let's try to figure out the the bus system and and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But just end up somewhere random. Not that we no. If I actually if the there is a way to do it. It usually will work out, yeah. but sometimes there's no way to do it. Gotcha. So gotcha. Yeah. Or it's just so sporadic, you just can't catch a bus or, or train. You know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they might have a bus system, but it like only runs like once a day or something. I don't know. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do think you, of an exact example about that, but. Do you use your smartphone and stuff when you're traveling? Now I do. Yeah. Yeah. Last few years, it's, it's got to be. It's awesome. It makes, it makes it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Even here, like just it's it. I can't read anything here. Like, yeah. I, if, if there's yeah. not any English char- characters, and um, if I didn't have that phone to get around, it, it yeah, it would be a lot, a lot more, a lot, right. lot difficult, a lot more difficult. I, I remember. <laughs> but now that. it's like even just going from here to that skate park for the contest yesterday, it was so easy to figure out. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I remember going to China for the first time, and iPhones existed. But they didn't have all the public transportation stuff in them and whatnot. Yeah. And just trying to take the train and just like kind of winging it and making it work yeah. just how difficult it was. And then you get yeah. on the train during rush hour yeah. and it's just like, I'm just going to pay the cash and take a taxi. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but like yeah. now would be like, oh, this is easy. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Screw it. Yeah. But um, yeah, so so that's my, my, my idea of a vacation. So <laughs> Nicole somehow puts up with that even if we're like, str- like in a weird situation. It's taking way longer. Hot, we get we you know we we the other thing too is I, I like to stay somewhere as cheap as possible yeah so if it's a hostel whatever that's what what, what we do okay and she's she's usually along for the ride or she does re- she i mean she usually finds a lot of places too so yeah um but uh do you pretty yeah. much bring camera gear anytime you go somewhere uh depends where and if it's bike riding related and i'm with people yeah but if you're, if what it's if like, it's just you, you and the missus? Uh, uh, I'll have a camera, but I don't bring like a 40 pound camera bag with me. Just, <laughs> it's I'm like a tiny, like, you know, and, and the other thing too is because especially when I'm going somewhere new and I don't know that the, what's going on there. I'm not trying to have something pricey with me. That's what I was thinking about yeah. staying in a hostel and having a, yeah, exactly. What do like you shoot? The 1DX? Yeah. I don't bring that. That's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's <stays home. laughs> Smart move. Yeah. So you've been a vegan for a number of years. Yep. How, how long have you been a vegan? Like 20 years, 22 years. So I think we yeah. joked 21 yesterday. years. Bef- yeah. Before it was cool? I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how is that traveling? Um, 
at first there was definitely a little bit of a challenge at times, but um well internationally, not not, not yeah, yeah. regionally. Um but then, you know, especially coming to a place like Japan, um Japan is definitely the hardest. Like, or I won't say Japan. I mean, there probably are other countries that I haven't been to that could be as challenging. It's yeah. more about the language, like how readable it is, yep. or how com- not readable, but like how comparable it is to English. Um, for many Spanish-speaking country, it's pretty much the same as when I'm home. Cause yeah, yeah. I can fi- I have it down enough to like figure out no pollo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, not not that it's e- always easy, but it can make can, it work. Yeah, yeah. But I, here, it's like you're trying to you go to the corner store and you're trying to like look at ingredients I'm, it's all in japanese yeah so it's just like uh <laughs> you yeah. know i have no idea but but uh fortunately like the last time i came here um peggy kind of went over all the i went in a store with him and he kind of showed me what was what was vegan what wasn't okay so that helped a ton then once i learned the couple key items that becomes my staple items <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 are you are you uh, a grocery shopper on the road you get food at the store a lot? i try to yeah 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 that's yeah, a, it helps. I mean, I, 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 it all depends on the circumstances. Like, every trip's different. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ran into uh, any countries where they kind of just serve you meat? Like, or it's a, a, a family table environment? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's happened. But, you know, I, I always try to explain, you know, beforehand what I eat and what I don't eat. Yep. You yep. know, but I've, I've had situations where, like, someone, I'm staying at someone's house and, like, they make me a bowl of soup. Yeah. And it has, like, pieces of ham in it, so I'm just like, you know. That guy. Yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, I don't want to get into this too deep, we don't need to, but what, are, are you a vegan, animal, ethical reasons, dietary, what's, what's, uh... Uh, pretty much any reason you could think of, they all kind of apply. <laughs> you know, like, whether it's were you, were you a veg- ethical or... vegetarian before yeah. vegan? Yeah. Okay. For a little bit, yeah. Question, like a year. question for you then. This is something yeah. I came across recently, and this has nothing to do with anything we're talking about. Uh-huh. I just want another opinion on it, because, uh... I uh, don't know too many vegans that I would ask about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your take on honey? Uh, I don't personally consume it. Okay. Because um, that's like saying... a controversial thing for vegans. Oh, yeah. right? Some do, yeah, some don't. Yeah, to some degree. I mean, I feel like, um, yeah, it's debatable. I mean, most. I, I'm not the kind of person that's like, Oh, if you eat honey, you're not, you know, I'm not trying to be like some kind of purist or whatever, yeah, you know, it's just, yeah. just, just kind of goofy. Well, you're a reasonable guy. I don't think you're all about the label. And, you yeah, know, I don't. But. I'm, yeah, I don't, like, I don't even, I'm like, I follow like a lot of the vegan principle or pretty much the, all the vegan principles for the most part. Yeah. But I'm not like, we're put like, running around, hey, I'm vegan, whatever. I don't. You that's, should be that's too. Just, it's my, yeah, you know, it's do. just my personal thing. You know, it has nothing to do with anyone else. Everybody else is on their own path. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. I have a um, buddy who has a supplement company, and they did like a, a plant protein, and they used a honey powder in it. Okay, it was marketed as vegan. And yeah, some people, they changed yeah. it. They changed it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But because uh, I mean, things. that's like where you know the people that that are vegan and don't consume honey. That's like, yeah, that's not. A yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you that's go, good each, when you go each grab each a vegan product, you assume there's not. Yeah, honey. exactly. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I've kind of heard both sides, and I'm like, oh, yeah. this is really confusing actually. Cause yeah. it's not you're not eating the animal. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, but it's still like coming from an insect and some people view insects insects as you know the same as yep animals. totally understand like, that there's, totally like, there's a religion that. that's that's very um adamant about that it's called it's it's like a sort of a branch off of a hindu religion called jain the uh, jainism and jainism yeah okay. and they're like the most strict vegans you could ever really like, yeah because they're they they pretty much don't they oh, man i don't want to mischaracterize yeah yeah it. yeah um, but remember, like they'll they'll only eat like the fruit that comes off a of tree. They won't kill trees to or or vegetables or like I'm sorry, they won't actually like kill a plant to consume it. Okay. So it's whatever the plant provides. Oh, wow. is What they eat. Yeah. So if like the food itself is like the plant. They yeah, won't... they won't eat it. Wow. Yeah. Like huh. you know, if it's only like you know, if, if uh, if there's a fruit tree that provides fruit, it's gonna eat, they'll eat the fruit or the seeds. Yeah, yeah. That's it. But they'll like they won't. They won't uh, step on insects or anything. They'll like wow. sort of, they have like a little broom that they'll walk. Is this walk. like in India mostly, or where is? Yeah, this? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Have you been there? No. That's I'd that's like on my there. list too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty um, high up there. Yeah, but that's like uh, that's just one example. I remember reading about it years ago. So that's why I'm not. I can't. The 
memory about all the specifics is a little rusty so yeah <laughs> i have yeah, to brush yeah. up on it to like really but but i'm not, I'm not a jane though don't worry <laughs> obviously did you, did you get into uh shooting photos through bmx or bmx yeah. through shooting photos i mean i remember when i was a kid i'd borrow my mom's camera and, and shoot random photos and then when i got to bike riding yeah you know, that was just that was very rare but on occasion i would yeah um and then i got to bike riding and then i remember had him having like a photography class in, in high school and I'd shoot some photos, but didn't really like get into it. Like, was that like black and white printing and stuff? Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Just, it was just like a brief, you know, like six month class or yeah. something. Yeah. But then I, then I didn't touch a camera again for years and then started this, uh, little zine at the time. And I was like, wow, I need photos for it. <laughs> so I bought a camera and then that's, that was it. How, yeah. how, how old were you then? Uh, 24. Okay. Yeah. So you, so you had a bit of a stint, kind of those golden years where you weren't shooting photos. Nah. I mean, I, I wish it. I did. I mean, because yeah. there, there was so much going on that time period. It would have been cool to have photos of, of yeah. that. Of yeah. That. But that just never was even on my mind about. Oh, I'm gonna take photos of this. I just didn't care. Who, who were some of the early guys you were shooting back in your area? Um, pretty much dudes I rode with. You know, like um, man, I have to think. Um, there were some dudes I rode trails with, like Alan Moy and uh, all the Woodbridge crew, and then like um, all like all, a lot of people in Don't Quit Your Day Job, you okay, know, like yeah. Jeff Z and yep. um, Bob Skirbo and um, George D. Yeah, just it was kind of like whoever I was riding with. That it's was it's kinda, cool. Yeah. It's cool that a lot of those guys are still in the game in one way or another. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah definitely. Game. I mean, all those dudes are still riding. It's just it's cool to see. Yeah. yeah. What's your relationship with riding? You seem to get out quite a bit. Yeah, I try to. I mean, that's just kind of my, uh, my like, well, how would you word it? Just my habit. Yeah. 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 Habit slash hobby. Do you I ride, ride a lot when you're home? Yeah, I try to. I mean, when it's nice out, I'm trying to ride at least five days a week. You know, it's Mostly. basically like, you know, that you have people that are like, oh, I go, I'm on a regular regimen going to the gym or whatever. Yeah, this, yeah. That's just bike riding is my, <laughs> my way of doing that. Do you, Staying, you a, keeping, you know, keeping shape and feel, you know. Do you have a car at home? Yeah. Okay. So you do have a car. So it's not all public transport. No, no, that's only on trips. Like, <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. I'm actually I'm almost the opposite of that when I'm home. Okay. But... <laughs> that's, uh, do, do you ride a lot of spots? Like, can you leave from your house? And you oh, yeah. That's that's, cool. that's part of the reason why I still live in Philly. Okay, I was going to say, that's. I assume that's yeah. part of the hood there. Yeah, that, well, not that the reason why I still live in Philly, that's why I stayed in Philly, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not that I have somewhere else I need, I'm like, oh, I want to move here, but I'm stuck here. I, just, I choose to live there, but that's why I've stayed is because I've never lived in an area where there was that much available riding architecture a pedal away yeah it's just it's yeah the best it's the best like I, my neighborhood especially is like i love it is that is in, it, in a mile radius there's like more stuff there's more stuff to ride in a mile radius for my house than i'd say in a five mile radius wherever else i've lived oh really yeah that doesn't suck <laughs> yeah it's like yeah but i mean i've also always lived in the burbs before that so it was yeah, like it's yeah. a, lot, a different scenario what part of philly are you in what's it called it's called fishtown that's like supposed to be a cool area, right? Apparently, I've, yeah. I've heard that's like a yeah. cool place to hang yeah, out. That's, yeah, that's. I mean, that's what everybody like. You, you see, like press, and it's like, oh, fish down the hardest neighborhood in, in America or something. <laughs> I'm just like, it, I look around, sure. I'm like, I don't know about that, but <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. Sure. Is that is, is riding BMX your primary fitness regime? Is that yeah? Most? I I'll be honest, man. I didn't know you were 46. Ah. Oh. So I mean, you you look good. Oh, you right. look healthy. So I mean, if, I don't know if it's the the vegan thing or riding or what, but I think that's uh, whatever yeah, you're doing. Maybe, you feel maybe good? a combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I definitely um, feels good as I did 20 years ago. You know, that's like, huge. Yeah, that's huge. It's yeah, great especially on my bike too. It's the same thing. It's like obviously I'm not not that I was ever a dude that's like oh I'm sending in I'm doing this or that. I I was never like that kind of rider, but um, I feel like a ride as a like from a technique perspective and comfort perspective, I feel like I'm a better rider now than I ever have been. That's awesome. Yeah. It's crazy because especially like when you hit the forties and stuff, that's that weird time where you meet people that are that age and they're old. You know what I yeah, mean? You meet yeah, some yeah, guys yeah. and they're like, oh, he's 44 and he's old. Yeah. And then it's yeah. like you. Like, I, I, if you would have told me you're like, oh, I'm 38, I'd be like, you must have got a really young start. But yeah, 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 yeah. I believe it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So congratulations. Oh, I guess thank you're, you. uh, you're going to live forever, right? That's kind of the Maybe. goal here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> quality, not quantity. That's yeah, my thing. Yeah. yeah. BMX wise, who are that's, some- that's another aspect of like, not necessarily because it's because it's a vegan diet, but like I try to eat as well as possible. Yep. Yep. For that reason, I just don't want to 
feel like shit when I get older. You know? I think that's one of the big, got to be a big advantage to that diet is just that there's less bullshit out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like you can definitely find some bullshit. You could definitely eat a shitty vegan diet. I've seen plenty of people that do that. And, and those are usually the people that are like, yeah, I was vegan for a couple of years, but I felt real bad. I had to like <laughs> start eating meat again or whatever. It's probably because they're what their choices were. Do you, do you take any supplements? Uh, yeah, I do a little bit, but that's more along the theory of, how can I word this? Uh, the supplements I take are more to counteract the environment that the human body is being subjected to. Okay. Because it's not, it's not an, in, like... It has the, nothing the, to do with, the, like, my food lacks blood. No, okay, it's not yeah. about that. It's more about, you know, what the typical human lives, the environment that the typical human lives in today compared to, you know, 500 years ago, isn't it? Or less, 200 years ago, before the Industrial Revolution. It's, yeah. it's subjected to way more, you know, toxic... Uh, yeah factors yeah you know in all on all levels totally so no, that makes sense no matter how good you eat you probably do need to supplement just to counteract all that so what do you take um there's like this multivitamin i take i take a variety of like you know like zinc okay uh certain like dha um vitamin c i'm a big promote uh proponent of um yeah, I mean, I don't have a list offhand, but like, no, no, I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm genuinely curious. <laughs> well, I kind of mix it up. I don't always take the same yeah. supplements yeah, 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 all the time, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Get, get and I, I always feel weird talking about uh, nutrition in a, like a public forum. Oh, because totally, it's like, I get it. Yeah, and I know you'd never because it, then it's like you, 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 then it's like you're almost sounding like an authority. And no, I'm, totally. I'm by no means, totally. a th- I know, I know <laughs> my sources are very good, yep. authoritarian figures, yep. in that realm, yep. but I'm not. So I don't want to. No, totally. Know, I'm, I'm I'm asking you. Out of no, no, it's fine. It's totally fine. Like I said, if we were talking it like in private, not um, yeah, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, on on mics, then it'd be like, oh yeah. yeah so you're totally. saying everybody should smoke cigarettes? Uh, totally. I totally <laughs> agree. Good, good possibly. Two packs a day, and you're there good. You, go. <laughs> you so over the years, you, I'm guessing you've shot a ton of photos, probably ten thousand plus. Good amount. Yeah. Do you have any one or two that stand out as some of your favorites? Uh, I wouldn't say some, there's one so, or two. Some there's of just, those South American ones, man. Some of those are really. Yeah. Like, uh, was it Tom White at the racetrack kind of jumped over? Oh, yeah, yeah, like that's, yeah I always yeah. like that one. Just some oh, of those, those trips, like, yeah. but is there anything that really stands out to you? I'd have to go through them, and like, because it's just, they're so, I've been on num- like a number of trips, yeah. so it's like, there's always like a favorite photo, usually from each trip. Yeah. But I couldn't say yeah. this, like, oh, this is my favorite photo ever, you know? I mean, well, the one that probably sticks out the most at this point in my life is the one I shot. It's actually, it's it was a shot in Egypt and um it's in I do this like uh photo video series called Maintain. Maintain. Yeah. yeah, it's in the first zine I did. Okay. It's a the center spread. Was that the same zine you started when you were twenty? No, no, it's okay. different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, totally different. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um that's probably my favorite photo. Just do one due to the circumstances in that particular moment when I shot the photo. Is it a BMX photo or what? Yeah. What, what, He's just doing like a bunny hop tail whip in this neighborhood in Cairo. Oh, okay. And the pyramids in the background. Okay, who's the writer? Connell Keenan. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, I could talk like a long time about this photo, so I don't know if you want to... G- give us give us a brief brief rundown. All right. Try to, I'm trying to figure out a way to say it as brief as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, the primary reason I even went on that trip was to go to the pyramids and possibly shoot a photo. So, like, there was already that... I don't know, it was like 6,000 miles or whatever just to go to to Israel where we were staying with a friend of mine. It was like me, Jeff Kosis, and Connell. Uh, we went on this trip. And that was in uh, 2014. And, uh, you know, we stayed at my friend Tal's house. Well, not wait. No, we stayed at this other dude's house, actually. I'm sorry. But but Tal was a friend of mine that, that you know, we rode with and stayed and, like, traveled with when we were in, in uh, Israel. And he lives out there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he lives right in Tel Aviv. Or out, just outside of Tel Aviv. But he has a shop in Tel Aviv. BMX shop? Yeah. What's that called? Uh, Night Rider. It's cool. Man. Yeah, it's right by right <laughs> next to yeah, it's right next to skate park. Okay. Um and uh so we traveled out there, then we went to the southernmost point of Israel, and then Tal and my friend Inamar, they they we traveled down there with them, but then they couldn't go into Egypt at that time due to their Visas Israel. Or no, oh. due to their Israeli okay, citizenship. Yep. yep. So from there, we took a bus and, both, you know, none of us had ever been to Egypt before. We don't know anything. Sending it. Yeah, we sent it and it was just basically going to the unknown. And 
we, it was kind of ill planned and probably that was almost a bad idea because it was because for the reason that when we did cross the border we didn't know where to go or and we only had we only had a really short window we only had like two days to okay, go there and come back out. yeah yeah and it was originally now, is, that, is that because of when you flew out or is that a visa issue or why why do you only have two days oh because just because uh i believe tal and Inamar had to be at work okay Gotcha. Like, you know, it, we had a short trip. It was like gotcha. we had like five days to go down there and like, ride. you know, we like yep, yep. stayed at this beach town, kind of checked, chilled and rode and stuff. But then we're like, oh, well, we're going to go here for two days. So, you know, yep, like yep. Uh, us three. So we did that. The bus ride was turned into this mess of like we couldn't go across the original route that we wanted to go due to this. There was a lot of turmoil in, in uh, Egypt at that time. Okay. And, and non-Egyptian citizens weren't allowed to cross the Sinai Peninsula the route that we originally want to go, which it normally would be like, uh, I think it was like, say six hours across to, to get to Cairo. So we had to go this other way, which took 12. Oh, wow. So, okay. <laughs> and it was it involved changing buses and stuff. Just and we chopping just, your time already. Yeah, already yeah. yeah. And then yeah. just, even just to get to the bus station, we had no idea and we had it like, it was just a... So if you have two days and it's 12 hours, that's half your trip is in the bus. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. So, th- that, the combination of all that and then the, the, there was a, the trip back was, was uh, very interesting because, um, back to Israel from Cairo because we left the next night. Um, we were going to take the bus, but then I ran into a cabbie the night before. We said, oh, I'll just drive you across. Okay. And it was like okay. not much more than it was for the bus. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, we'll take the shortcut across where we weren't supposed to go. Oh, wow. And <laughs> so that was that was an adventure. But See, did it work? Yeah. Oh, wow. We got, we got back. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and somehow, yeah, somehow there's no problems. There was a lot of checkpoints and a lot of like Got why you bit, here yeah. kind of situation. Try but, to go home. but the dude, the dude <laughs> smoothed it over. Yeah, he, that, he made it work. It's but, a quality cabbie right there. Yeah, but anyway, that was all. That was just one factor of like that photo of getting that photo. Um, so, man, yeah, I'm not really uh, organizing my thoughts very well. Yeah, about, no like, worries. The whole man. scenario is bomb. But anyway, either way, I, I'll just cut it short. Like, yeah, that, that's my favorite photo right now. Did you did you shoot? I think you did that. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of famous, or maybe it's just famous to me. I think it was a spread, and it was uh, Brian Foster doing kind of like a, a tight carve, like a bar end almost dragging on the ground. Yeah, like the scrub over roller. That, that was one of my favorite ones you've done. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's one that's A lot of people to seem me. to really like that photo, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that by far the, the most uh, positive response of, a, of like a trails photo, especially that I've ever gotten. I think it's just less is more simple. Yeah, it's that's what it is. It's, it's a combination of who it is, what he's doing. Um, it represents a lot. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, um, and that's that's all due to BF because he was the one who even had the idea. He's like, oh hey, maybe I'll shoot a uh, scrub over this roller. And I was yeah. like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then and I shot it, and it was like, yeah. I never now. saw anything like that before, yeah. and I know afterwards people were trying to shoot him. Yeah. Other guys trying yeah, to shoot yeah. him, <laughs> and like that's the guys could do him, but it's kind of like that was the first like yeah, kind of like. He, Kind of the only one that matters, you know. Yeah. Like, and to find someone that'll do it like he does. It. Oh, nobody like, does. Yeah, nobody yeah, does. Yeah, exactly. Did you have you been shooting Brian for a long time? You yeah. Kind of the same yeah. area. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, not for the first, like, I'd say, six years that I, I was shooting photos because he was living, still living in California. Okay. And I didn't yeah. really know him yeah. well before then. Like I'd met him here and there, but I didn't really know him all until he moved. Once he moved to New Jersey, then I started riding with him more and stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But it was funny. I think the first photos I actually ever shot of him were on Road Fools Nine. Oh wow! In California. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where what, what was Road Fools Nine? What were the stops on that? It was like uh, Southern California up to like sort of central to Nevada. Okay, I'm trying to remember. Here. I think it was to Nevada. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it ended. It was like there was like two days there. Okay, I think. I don't think it was because I grew up in Nevada, and eleven was Nevada. Yeah, but I think it might have ended there. But it was because. I mean, I, said, I may be wrong about that, but this, this is a little while. I'd say 99% of the trip took place in California. Yep. But yep. I think everybody flew out of, out of Las Vegas. Okay. That That's probably sense. why there really wasn't any Vegas footage in there. Well, the, the child in me is really bummed to learn that. Yeah. I didn't get to know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, I, like I said, I, there's a chance I'm, I'm totally way off on that. But you have any uh, anything else you want to accomplish in the BMX photo game? You just kind of um. Out? I'm just working on, I mean, my main thing is just the, the series of, uh, maintain projects I got working on. Yeah. Yeah. After that, I don't know. Figure it out. Whatever. Yeah. What but that's, the, that's my just main the, thing. The now. zine and what, what else? You well, have? I, I just finished, uh, a book. I was like, that's chapter four. 
and then I got six more in the works. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. They're all in like different forms. The, some of them obviously going to be kind of same, similar thing, like a, a book style. Yeah. Uh, print project. Are you, are you embracing the video thing? Seems like you're. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I made a video when I was like, I don't know, 20. So it's, it's always been there. A little yeah. Bit. Okay. I, I've, I've, I always enjoyed making videos or like doing video uh, like shooting video or whatever yep, yep. not to say I, i'm i like enjoy putting together videos because <laughs> like I, I did that video one when i was a kid but that yep. does, that doesn't even, I don't even really count that but um but yeah i mean when i uh i'd say what was it four four or five years oh no actually i got a i got i got a, first time i'd gotten a video camera was for that trip when i went to argentina Oh wow! I okay. bought a TRV 900 right before that trip. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like the first time I had like filmed anything and since like '92. Nice, you know. Nice. Um, and uh, but yeah, so like I, you know, I, I had a stint of like filming a little bit in the early 2000s, and then once photography became a much bigger part of what I was doing, then I just kind of stopped. And, and HD kind of came into play, and then yep. I just kind of yep. stopped stopped filming for a while. And then now, yeah, now I started messing around in the last let's say last like four years. Of like filming again a little yeah. bit and enjoy, enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I definitely photography is definitely my my bread and butter. No, nah, I wouldn't call it that. I would just say that's my my most favorite part of yeah. any kind of like medium. Medium, yeah. yeah. Um, video's fun, but I feel like with with photography, I know what I want to do ninety percent of the time. Yep. With video, I feel like it's like thirty percent of the time. <laughs> I, there's like there's other stuff like oh, I want to do this or that, or I might have like or I just don't have the necessarily always have the right vision. Yeah. That I know it's there. I know there's something there that I want to capture in a certain way, but I don't know how to do it. Or yeah, have yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The know how. So yeah. it's like I'm I'm just less skilled in it. Yeah. So it's not. That's why I I, I think, and it kind of gets frustrating sometimes. But <laughs> but I, that's why I enjoy it. Definitely, photography is always like it's like it's second nature to me at this point. Did you, you do a, a, do anything long enough? It becomes that way. Did so. you have a hard time uh, getting the whole digital kit, or did you kind of embrace that from the get? No, I mean I was, I think, when it digital first really came into its own. I really enjoyed it for sequences at first. I'm like, yeah, oh, this is great. Yeah. I'm not burning through this eight rolls of film. Me yeah, of yeah. I'm like, I don't have to roll my <laughs> own film anymore. Like to, so I don't have to worry about, you know, the cut costs. Like yeah, this, is, yeah. this is great. Um, as far as quality goes, I mean, once digital came into its own, as far as qual like the level of quality, um, I pretty much, yeah, I wouldn't say I was, I was never like an anti-digital person. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that I, I really could say that, film still reign supreme is certain medium format um situate like certain situations where medium format is the best what well, looks the best as far as like square medium format, like six by six medium format yeah, looks yeah. that's still my favorite by far yeah like, there's there, there there was never a proper digital back that came out that would match what a six by six uh, film transparency. That six by be. six with that that proper fisheye in there. Yeah, that's such a sexy. That's setup. that's my. It's one like of my favorites, all time favorites. Even the photos I you know I look back to like today. I'll, I'll if I look at a fisheye uh, six by six uh, film transparency, and it was shot you know ten years ago. I'm like this thing's. I love it. You know it just yeah. looks amazing. Yeah, yeah it, it's just hard to hard to to really match that you shoot film at all anymore yeah i do a little bit it's yeah. more economics like i, I really like riding bike riding i rarely shoot film yeah um that makes sense if you're on a cool trip or something or... yeah i don't even bring you know i'm not like lugging around a hasselblad anymore you know like i don't, yeah. I don't do that just yeah. like i said it just if i had money for to buy film and you know and pay for the processing i would probably shoot a little more but yeah, yeah i just don't so I do shoot it pretty regularly when I'm home, but it's not BMX. It's like these other yep. photo projects I'm working. This other photo project I'm working on. It's kind of so. kind of making me sad, and I'm thinking back to those the six by six fish eyes. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's yeah. been a while. Man. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, such that's a big great. part of it, especially yeah. like action sports photography. You know, yeah. like BMX and skate and whatnot. Yeah. How good it looks. And it's also you know like with uh, the the biggest advantage to beyond like just how it looks and certain like I said certain situations the square format just works better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beyond that, um, at one point it was like the, the flashing speed on the, on the most uh, medium format five hundred oh, five hundred okay. yeah so yeah. Was th that there was never a digital setup that would compare yeah so it was just like other than like some couple of digital uh, 
medium format cameras. So it was just like, why, you know, yeah. it was stepping down when you were shooting. Yeah. Uh, digital. Uh, like just, yeah, when you're just shooting digital, like 35 millimeter. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but now like with the hypersync and all that stuff, it's like, it's kind of surpassed that. So that's another reason why it's just like. Do you shoot terrible. fast shutter with a flash a lot? Uh, yeah, my setup's a little janky. It's not, not <laughs> there's probably better setups, but I have, I, there's a, a setup I want to get that will alleviate that problem. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. You still uh, enjoying spending tons of money on camera gear? I would have had the money. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't. That's, so. that's the best way to yeah. not spend all your money on yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Don't have a job. Place. Good job. And <laughs> yeah, no yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. You're good. <laughs> Sticking the BMX world would be just fine. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I'll give you one more question, a very, very important one here, um, and you have to answer it. Who's your favorite BMX rider of all time? <sighs> Got to name one. First one you name counts. Uh. Can I name a couple? <laughs> name a couple, but the first one counts. Uh, I, can, nah, I can't. I can't. I can't name it that one person. There's no way. Name, like name, you can't. Name, name a couple. Name a couple. All right. Uh, well, Mikey Aiken for sure. Of course. Uh, BF just for longevity yep. purposes alone. Um, I mean, this is all time because I mean yeah, it, it's always time. changing. Like totally same. Yeah. So that that's two definites. Um. Hamilton, yep, for sure. We're at three. Uh, hmm. Man, this might take a while <laughs> <laughs> to narrow it down. Uh, say like Garrett Burns. Uh, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. It's a that's a he, he's always a, a pleasure to watch ride. Yep. Um, man. Currently, too. There, I mean, ah, so many people. It's yeah, give, give Corey somebody. Walsh. I'll throw that there in. There you go. Just that's a good yeah. one. All right. Yeah. All right, that's good. That's a good five right now. How about this? Here's a random bonus one. I'll throw in there. Yeah. Um, any one or two uh, BMX photographers you enjoy? Oh yeah. I mean, without without just listing, because there's not a whole lot of them. Yeah. Is, yeah. There, is there one or two that really stand out to you as guys that do something um, different or something you really enjoy? Yeah. I mean, there's like you know. I mean, I have to say, like, kind of point to the OGs, you know, yeah. there's always people like, you know, like Wendy Osborne, hands yep, down, yep. like, that's, like, I could look back at a magazine from 30 years ago and look at her photos and be like, you know, you could tell her photos, just the way she shot stuff was, you know, she paved the way for a lot of kind people. Kind of before it's time. Yeah. She's yeah. probably, probably one of the most, like, influential, if not the influential, influential BMX photographer. You yeah. Know? It's just yeah. like, you know, a lot of people point to Spike Jones, which, who also was a, a huge influence on a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but she influenced him, you know, so yeah. it's like, and then, yeah. you know, you have dudes like, like, uh, like Taylor. Um, I really liked his stuff in like the late nineties. Yeah. Um, man, Ted Nelson. I always loved his stuff too. Chris Hallman too, of course. Yeah. yeah. Early 2000s. Yeah. His, his stuff was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go through this. <laughs> how about, how about no, you got Corey Walsh for the rider? Give him a modern one. Modern one. Um, man. Hmm. Yeah, there's, a, there's like, I feel like there's a lot of people. I mean, it's kind of weird because I feel like there's been a lot of people in the last 10 years, but a lot of people have just kind of moved yeah, on. You know who I really enjoyed was Jeff Allen. Oh yeah, yeah, Jeff. I like Jeff sure. Allen yeah. stuff a lot. Yeah, he, he's I, not, I he's a one, of those, one yeah. of those ones that kind of went away, but yeah, he, yeah, he, I'm definitely a big fan of real his creative stuff. lighting yeah. and stuff. He was definitely different. one of the dudes that was like pushing stuff in like the mid 2000s. Yeah, um, yeah, he's one. And of I was that. a big fan. I was definitely a bummer when he kind of had to move on, not necessarily by choice, but just because he he needed. I hope he's killing it. Yeah, you nah, know? it seems like he's doing yeah, good. It does. Yeah, it does. It does. It's always a super cool guy too. Yeah, but incredibly talented. Yeah, but Jeff Z. Yeah, of course. Yes, he's yeah. always, always on yeah. top of the Definitely. game. Definitely. But 100%. cool. Rob Delucky, I appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate Thanks the for insight, man. Yeah. It's always a pleasure uh, getting to hang out with you in random cities and countries. And yeah. uh, let's go uh, enjoy Tokyo. Yeah, sounds good. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Arigato. That's what it's Arigato. 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 That's I'm thank learning. you. Yeah. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> I know two words. That's it. <laughs> All right, that does it for today. Big thank you to Mr. Delecky for taking the time to chat. Be sure to follow him on Instagram at Delecky Visuals, one word. And also be sure to check out his zine, Maintain. And until next time, just remember, it doesn't count if you don't pull the rollback. See ya.